Hi chemists, this video is all about excess reacting calculations and the good news is, is that you know quite a bit of this already because we're going to have to calculate the limiting reactant to do anything with our excess reactants. Can't believe we're already on day five of notes. By the end of this video, you should be able to calculate how much of the excess reactant reacts once the limiting reactant is completely used up and calculate how much excess reactant remains after the reaction is complete. Before we do that though, I wanted to show you another way that you can calculate limiting reactants, specifically using mole-mole calculations. So in this question, we've got iron three oxide being produced from moles of iron and moles of oxygen. As usual, we'll need our word equation and our formula equation. We're gonna do our first calculation from moles of iron to moles of iron three oxide, and our second calculation from moles of oxygen to moles of iron three oxide. Our known is 13.17 moles of iron, and our unknown is moles of iron three oxide. You can see that this is a mole-mole calculation because we're going from moles of one substance into moles of another substance. So these calculations are a little bit easier because you don't have to calculate molar masses for anything. So we'll start with our 13.17 moles of iron and we'll have to use the mole ratio of four moles of iron to two moles of iron three oxide. According to this calculation, we should get 6.585 moles of iron three oxide. But like usual with any limiting reacting calculation, we also have to do a second calculation. So we'll start with our 18.19 moles of O2 and we're still going to the moles of iron three oxide. 18.19, moles of O2 over one. Our mole ratio is now between the oxygen and the iron three oxide. And then we have our moles of O2 canceling and we get 12.13 moles of iron three oxide. Just like we talked about the other day, again, we can't produce both of these amounts. We said that the limiting reactant is always the one that produces the smaller amount. So in this case, 12.13 can actually be produced, and that means that 6.585 is what is actually produced. And that means that the mole of iron is what is limiting. So that's an example of a mole-mole calculation with limiting reactants. Let's move on to some excess reacting calculations. So here's an example. So it says, what mass of cobalt-3 chloride is formed for the reaction of 3.478 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of cobalt with 57.92 liters of Cl2 gas at STP? Part B is the new part here. It says how much of the excess reactant reacts and how much is left over. So we'll do what we know first. We first have to decide, well, what mass is actually formed, and to do that, we need to do a limiting reacting calculation, just like usual. And of course, I don't give you the balanced chemical equation, so you need that too. So to take care of this first part, we'll start with our known and our unknown, just like usual. Notice that we have atoms, so that's a clear sign. We're gonna have to use 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd somewhere. So we'll take our known and put it over one, and we'll put 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd on bottom to one mole on top. Next up is the mole ratio step. The ratio is going to be between cobalt and cobalt three chloride. And then because the question is asking what mass of cobalt three chloride is produced, I'm going to use the molar mass. According to this calculation, 95.40 grams of cobalt-3 chloride is what's produced. However, this is only true if we have a unlimited supply of the other reactant. However, we only have 57.92 grams, excuse me, liters of Cl2. So that's why my calculation now has to use the Cl2. So my next calculation is going to start with the 57.92 uh, liters of Cl2, I almost did it, <laughs> and our unknown is how many grams of cobalt-3 chloride is produced. So since we have liters, 
we are going to have to use 22.4 liters. So that makes it a little bit easier too because you don't have to calculate molar mass. Next step is the mole ratio. Notice it's three moles of Cl2 in the balanced equation to two moles of cobalt-3 chloride that's produced. And then the last step, as I mentioned, is always going to be the same because we are going to the same substance in the end. When you perform this calculation, you should get 284.7 grams of cobalt-3 chloride. As I mentioned in the previous example, both of these things cannot be produced. The one that produces the greater amount means that it is an excess. So therefore, 284.7 grams isn't what's produced, and the 95.40 grams of cobalt-3 chloride is. That means that the cobalt is going to be the limiting reactant, and the chlorine is going to be the excess reactant. We're now working on part B. Like I said, this is the new part. So it wants to know how much of the excess reactant reacts and how much is left over. So we'll do that first part, how much of the excess reactant reacts. So we identified cobalt as the limiting and chlorine as the excess. So this is where you're going to have to do a third dimensional analysis calculation where your limiting reactant is always going to be the known. So that's going to be what you're starting with. So that means that the amount of cobalt three, uh, excuse me, the amount of cobalt that we were given in the problem, that's going to be your known. And the excess reactant units is the unknown. So that means that 3.478 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of cobalt is going to be the known. And the unknown is what, how many liters of Cl2. Again, the whole purpose of this calculation is to see what amount of the excess reactant is what is reacting? I know that's a lot of reacts, but you understand. So to do this, we'll start with our known and put it over 1. Again, we have atoms, so we'll have to use 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Be careful here. Our mole ratio is not between a reactant and a product. Remember, it's between the two reactants. So we'll have to have the two moles of cobalt and the three moles of chlorine. And then the final step is what volume? So, because our unknown is volume of Cl2, so we'll have to use the 22.4 liters again. When you do this calculation, you should get 19.41 liters of Cl2. This again represents how much reacts. So this is how much of the chlorine that reacts. The last part of this is how much is left over. So to figure out how much is left over or unreacted, all you have to do is take that third dimensional analysis and subtract that from the amount that's given in the problem. So this calculation isn't too bad. So according to the problem, we have 50.972 liters of Cl2 available. And in the last calculation, we saw that 19.41 liters of Cl2 is what reacts. So therefore, 38.51 liters of Cl2 is what is left over. So these are long calculations. I know that to be true, but don't worry. You've got this. You just need to practice. Thank you so much for watching. You did a great job.